Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the course on uh, medical biomaterials. We will continue on the topic of uh, metallic uh, biomaterials. Metals have a very unique property uh, that is called the lattice structure. Okay. That means uh, the metal, the atoms in the metal are arranged in certain fashion. Okay. In, if you look at it in a, as a cube, they are arranged in a certain fashion which gives them high stiffness that means uh, modulus and also the strength. Okay, there are different types of arrangements that are possible. Um, for example, um, iron, vanadium, uh, chromium, nubidinum, all these form something called a body centered cubic. That means, if we take uh, this as a lattice cubical structure, um, okay, then there will be atoms in all these uh, eight corners as well as there will be one atom in the middle. That is why it is called body centered cubic okay. and uh, this particular lattice is repeated and that is how this uh, these elements will be seen as actually. So, um, if you keep breaking it to smaller and smaller and smaller finally, you will end up with this uh, body centered cubic that will be repeated throughout okay. that is called the crystal structure. Similarly, if you look at uh, aluminum, nickel, um, uh, silver, gold, copper they form something called face centered cubic. That means, in addition to atoms being present at the corners that is 8 atoms, um, there will be 6 faces in a cube. So, those faces are also have atoms. Okay? That is why it is called face centered cubic. And uh, if you look at uh, titanium, zinc, magnesium, cadmium, they appear like a hexagonal as you can see this is hexagon that means 6 faces. So, there will be atoms in all these 6 faces and then there will be one in the center okay. that is the hexagonal. So, the repeating unit of this crystal of titanium will appear like this. Okay. So, they will be stacked together that is how the crystal is formed and um, this type of crystalline arrangement gives them very good stiffness and strength as well okay. and uh, very interestingly. Um, from when the temperature is changed, uh, some um, metals change from say FCC that is face center to BCC, uh, sometimes they change from hexagonal to BCC and so on actually. So, those are all temperature changes um, which uh, in change in temperature leading to change in their faces. Okay. So, this is the repeat unit and uh, the crystal will made up of this type of uh, repeat units and that is the beauty of metals. And uh, sometimes when you have alloys when that means you have two um, atoms who which may have similar um, atomic radius but then uh, some of these spaces may be occupied by the other atom at uh, very low concentrations. So, if the um, radius of uh, the second atom is much larger then the crystal structure may be um, dis disrupted. So, all these things can happen uh, with the metals and uh, we will look at it a uh, little bit in more detail in this class as well as in the next class. Okay? Uh, so, as I said unit cell this is the smallest unit of a crystal. So, if you take a crystal of iron and keep breaking it into smaller and smaller and smaller uh, finally, you will end up with the this type of uh, cubical lattice and that will be a body centered cubic. Okay. Um, so, you will have atoms here, here, here in the corners um, and there will be one in the center. So, this central atom is unique for this particular lattice whereas, these corner atoms are shared by 8 different cubes that may be placed. Okay. So, you need to remember this. So, this is unique only for this lattice whereas, these corners are um, shared by a 8 different cubes and again here if you take the face centered cubic these atoms which are on the faces are shared by 2 
lattices one on top of another. Okay. Same thing here in hexagonal uh, this particular um, atom is shared by another hexagon which may be coming on top of that actually. Okay. So, it is not unique as in BCC like you see here uh, this particular atom is unique to this particular uh, lattice structure. Okay. Um, so, this uh, crystal is repeated the um, so in a crystal this particular lattice is repeated again and again to infinite number of unit cells. Okay. So, this is called a unit cell. Now, this unit cell has 6 important uh, parameters A, B, C these are the 3 lengths alpha, beta, gamma these are the 3 angles. Okay. So, 3 axis A, B, C um, and 3 angles alpha, beta, gamma. Now, these A can be equal to B can be equal to C or A can be equal to B, but C not equal to C. Similarly, the angles can be 90 degrees and all equal in some cases angles need not be equal. So, you can have different permutation and combinations. So, we will have different types of unit cells. Okay. So, all um, crystals will fall under that category. Uh, it is true for metals and also for uh, say um, salts which are crystalline salts like sodium chloride. Um, they will all fall under this uh, family. Okay. There are only one set of family, I mean there are many sets of families uh, based on uh, uh, the way their axis dimensions are, whether they are equal to each other or not equal to and whether angles, whether the angles are equal or not equal to and so on actually. Okay. So, the beauty of it, so if uh, your um, metal has a unit cell of certain dimensions and it falls in one family, then uh, you can say that some of the physico chemical parameters or properties may be similar. We will look at a little bit more in detail. Okay. So, this is called the unit cell. Um, so, a crystal will contain infinite number of these unit cells and unit cells can be defined based on the 3 axis length A, B, C and 3 angles alpha, beta and gamma. Okay. Um, these can be described by a term that is called the Miller indices. Okay. This Miller indices, it describes the orientation of a plane in a 3D lattice, this is called Bravais lattice with respect to the axis A, B, C. So, we have in a 3 dimension the axis uh, A, B, C okay. and um, Miller indices tells you uh, what is the uh, orientation. Okay. The Miller index is a series of co-primer integers, so it is all whole number you know, 1, 2, 1, 1, 1, 1 like that that are inversely proportional to the intercepts of the crystal phase or crystallographic planes with the edge of the unit cell. Okay. So, um, these crystal planes where it cuts these axis that is what tell okay. that is what is the Miller indices. So, the general form of Miller index is H comma K comma L okay, where H, K and L are integers related to the unit cells along the A, B, C crystal axis. Okay. So, we have the A, B, C crystal axis and H, K, L are integers and we will know where they cut with each other. Okay. Um, we will spend more time on this, so you do not have to worry, uh, you may, uh, it may appear very confusing, okay. we will spend some time. So, in a 3 dimension, uh, if you have a point in a 3 dimension of course, it can be represented by H k L. Okay. So, if a point is there in the x direction, it is say 1 centimeter away and in y direction from the origin it is 2 centimeter away and in the z direction from the origin it is 3 centimeter away, then that point is called 1, 2, 3, right. This we have studied in our school. Um, so, but if we represent like this, then it represents a plane. So, if it is represented like this, comma, comma, then it represents a point. Then if we represent like this, then we are talking about a direction from the origin of the 3 dimension and if you are representing like this type of bracket, then it represents a family of planes that is what it means actually a family of planes. We will look at it in more detail. Okay, now, uh, two dimension look at this. So, we have say A and B. Okay. So, you can have this is two dimension. So, we are having A axis like this uh, B axis like this okay. direction is like this. So, if it is three dimension of course, you can have a C axis which is perpendicular to the plane of this paper. Uh, suppose this is the origin and the direction is like this you know 3 
okay, along the A and here uh, along the B it is minus 2 because it is going in the negative direction okay, because B is going like this, A is going like this direction. So, for A it is positive, but B is minus. So, this point is 3 minus 2, do you understand? So, uh, because the representation is A going like this, B going like this, that is why we call this as minus 2. So, this point is called 3 comma minus 2. Now, the Miller index for this, like I said, okay, the representing a direction. So, we call it 3, 2 and there is a line on top and then we put a square bracket. Line on top means negative and then you need to put a square bracket. So, it tells you direction of this vector. We call this vector, direction is represented by 3, 2 with a dash on top. When you put this, it means minus and when you put like this, it means it is a direction, Miller in this. Whereas, when you put 3 comma minus 2, that means it represents this point. Okay? And uh, as I said, we um, this point we call it minus 2 because the direction for B is like this, direction for A is like this. If the direction for B had been this way, then of course, this could have been a plus 2 point. So, that could have been 3 comma plus 2. Okay? Do you understand? So, because of the convention, the direction you have put A and B like this, uh, we represent uh, this point as minus 2. Okay. Now, we can have several parallel lines, right? So, for all these, we can have 3 comma minus 2 as the vector. These are all set of vectors, um, okay, which have this type of 3 minus 2 because they are all parallel to each other. They are all parallel vectors. Okay. So, now let us go to plane because um, in a crystal structure, uh, in a lattice, we are going to have planes. So, for these planes, um, how do we determine the Miller indices? Once you call it plane, it is going to be three dimensional A, B, C, right? So, how do we find out? Now, find out where the plane intercepts the three axis, the x axis, the y axis, and where it cuts them. Okay? So, specify them. Take the reciprocal, that means um, you take a reciprocal of each one of them. And then if still it is coming out as a fraction, we make it as a whole number. That will be the Miller index for that particular plane. You understand? So, first see where the plane, because the plane, once we call it a plane, it is a three dimensional, um, it is an A, B, C type. Okay? So, we see where they cut the three axes. Okay? Then we take a reciprocal of that. If you get fractional, then we clear the fraction. Okay. So, that they, you get a whole number and that is called the Miller index for that particular plane. We will look at some examples, do not worry. Okay. Before that, let us look at it. See, this is x axis, this is sorry, this is sorry, this is x axis, say this is y axis, this is z axis. Okay. Now, look at uh, all these uh, planes, parallel planes. Okay. Imagine, take this plane. This plane is cutting the x axis at say 1, okay? we will call it A as 1, okay? uh, but it is not cutting the y and z axis. Okay? You understand? So, it is not cutting the y and z axis. So, 1 comma infinity comma infinity, this is how this plane is designated because it cuts the x axis say at A, whereas it is parallel to the y axis as well as z axis, it is not cutting that. So, we call this infinite. So, this plane is designated as 1 comma infinite comma infinite. Okay. So, once this plane we know, so obviously, um, it is parallel to the y axis, it is parallel to the z axis. Okay. Do you understand this? So, we can have several planes like this, you know, which are all uh, parallel to each other okay, like this. So, we can have like this, like this, like this, like this, okay. but they are all parallel to each other. So, they do not cut the y axis, they do not cut the z axis. Okay. Uh, so, they will cut only the x axis at different places, say A. A is 1 means 1, then A may cut at 2A, they may cut at 3A and so on actually, okay. but they are all parallel to each other. So, their y and z uh, directions are represented as infinity, infinity. Okay. Now, we can have similarly planes like this, 
which cuts the y axis, but it does not cut the x and z axis. So, we like infinity 1 infinity just like a previous case I said 1 infinity comma infinity um, if uh, you have a plane like this it is infinity 1 comma infinity. Uh, similarly, we can have a plane which cuts the z axis, but it does not cut the x and y axis. So, it is parallel to x and y. So, it can be infinity infinity 1. So, this particular plane of this uh, cube can be 1 infinity infinity this particular plane um, of the this cube is infinity 1 comma infinity because 1 this 1 is uh, representing that it is cutting the y axis and um, and this one here represents that it is cutting the z axis not the x and y axis ok. Now, how do we calculate the Miller index for each of this uh, we take the reciprocal. So, 1 is 1 infinity reciprocal is 0 infinity reciprocal. So, this Miller index for this plane is 1 0 0. Similarly, uh, say this is infinity 1 infinity. So, the Miller index of this plane is 0 1 0 because reciprocal of infinity is 0, uh, reciprocal of 1 is 1, uh, reciprocal of infinity is 0. So, we get 0 1 0. Uh, look at this plane um, infinity infinity 1. So, the Miller index of this will be 0 0 1 ok because Miller index what do we do? we take the reciprocal of the parameters of each crystal phase understand. Now, let us go into a slightly difficult problem it is not so difficult, but uh, let us assume I want to know the Miller index of this particular plane the one which is marked in red. So, it is cutting the x axis at A, uh, it is cutting the y axis at uh, A, it is not cutting the z axis. So, um, this point um, A 0 0 and this point is 0 a 0. So, 0 means uh, no x it is not cutting the x axis a means it is cutting the y axis at a and 0 means it is not cutting the z axis. Now, I want to know what is the Miller index of this uh, particular plane ok. So, it is cutting the x axis at 1 ok, it is cutting the y axis at 1 and then z axis is not cutting. So, we take a reciprocal so, the Miller index of this will be 1 1 0 understand ok. So, it is cutting the x axis at 1 a or and it is cutting the y axis also at a. So, they are equal. So, we can call it 1 1 it is not cutting the z axis. So, infinity. So, Miller index will be uh, 1 by 1 1 by 1 1 by infinity 0. So, this Miller index for this plane is 1 1 0 this is the uh, the plane which represents the longer diagonal of a cube ok. Now, let us look at this, this uh, particular uh, plane it is uh, cutting the x axis at a. Uh, so, this point is a 0 0, this point is 0 a 0, this point is 0 0 a right 0 0 a means uh, this point is x is 0, y is 0, z is a. So, what will be the Miller index? So, we can say uh, a a a comma a comma a. So, that will be when you take the reciprocal ok 1 1 1 ok understand. So, it is so the Miller index of this particular plane will be 1 1 1. So, if you we can do the reverse also. So, we take the reverse of these Miller index. So, that means this plane cuts the x by 1 that is 1 by 1 is 1 1 by 1 is 1 1 by 1 is 1. So, it is cutting the x y z at 1 1 1 points. Let us look at this uh, particular plane, so, look at this plane ok. So, this particular point is x is equal to 0, y equal to a, z is equal to 0 and this particular point is x is equal to a by 2, y is equal to 0, z is equal to 0. So, what do we do? So, the intercept is um, a by 2 a and infinity or it is half 1 infinity. So, when we do the reciprocal this becomes 2 this becomes 1 and this becomes 0 ok. So, we understand this uh, particular situation we have uh, the plane is cutting the x axis at uh, a by 2 y axis at a and z it is not cutting. So, we will call it infinity. So, it is a by 2 we will call it half a we will call it 1 uh, infinity. So, when we take the reciprocal this becomes 2 1 0. So, this plane the Miller index of this uh, plane is 2 1 0 ok. Let us uh, look at another um, plane 
Okay. So, look at this plane, it is uh, cutting the x axis at a by 2, it is cutting the y axis at a and it is cutting the z axis at a by 2. Okay. So, the half 1 half. So, when we take the reciprocal it becomes 2 1 2. So, the Miller index of this plane is 2 1 2. You understand? So, it is quite simple, uh, it is not very difficult. Uh, we need to see where the plane cuts in the x and y and z axis and then we take uh, the reciprocal and make it into whole number. So, it is not very difficult. So, we can have negative situation also when um, the plane cuts x in the negative direction or it cuts the y in the negative direction or z also in the negative direction. So, if you have negative and we take a reciprocal we may have to put a um, dash on top of it uh, to indicate that it is a negative. Now, um, all these, uh, um, these unit cells have lot of symmetry, okay. um, they have different types of symmetry. That is a symmetry is a state in which parts on opposite sides of a plane, line or point display arrangements that are related to one another. Okay. That is called uh, symmetry via a symmetry operation such as translation. All these uh, cells, unit cells have symmetry, okay. symmetry, there are different types of symmetry like when we look into a mirror, um, there is called a reflection symmetry. Right? So, like that you know the, all these unit cells have symmetry. Um, so, in, it is very, very important to know what this, this symmetry means actually and symmetry plays a very important role in grouping uh, various crystals. Um, with similar physical chemical properties. So, what is this symmetry? This is symmetry is a state in which parts on opposite sides of a plane, line uh, or point display arrangements that are related to one another through a symmetry operation such as translation, rotation, reflection or inversion. Okay? So, basically symmetry is rotation. So, when I rotate it, um, what I had the original as against uh, the rotated form if they are same that is called the rotational symmetry. So, if I have uh, translation symmetry that means when I move uh, translate it or move it um, the original form as against the mo moved form or similar that is called translational. Then we have gliding symmetry that means if I glide it uh, from one position to another and the original form and the glide the form after the gliding then it is called the gliding. Then the reflection if there is a symmetry of the original form and the reflected form then we call it reflection symmetry and similarly inversion. So, when you invert it the original form and the inverted form are similar then that is called inversion symmetry. We will not go too much into it, but symmetry is also very important to know um, the various types of crystals um, will have different uh, uh, symmetry forms. Okay. Uh, so, crystals are grouped into seven crystal systems according to characteristic symmetry of the unit cell. Like I said here, you know, um, they can have rotational symmetry, they can have translational, glide, reflection, inversion and you can also have combinations of that. Okay? So, the crystals are grouped based on this particular symmetry form, um, symmetry of their unit cells and uh, you can have combination of one or more. Okay? So, you can have combinations, not just one. You can have three of them, some crystals may have three symmetries, some of them have two symmetries and so on actually. Okay, that is what is called the crystal system. Okay. So, there are 14 Bravais lattices and there are seven crystal classes. Okay. This data was obtained from uh, this particular uh, PowerPoint reference. Okay. So, there are seven major crystal classes like cubic, tetragonal, orthorhombic, hexagonal, monoclinic, triclinic, trigonal. Okay. Cubic, tetragonal, orthorhombic, hexagonal, monoclinic, triclinic, trigonal. These are the seven crystal classes. Okay. They are grouped based on uh, these uh, six parameters, the three lengths that is the ABC length and three angles, the alpha, beta, gamma. Okay. Now, each of these form can have 
okay the primitive structure that means uh, atoms present only in their corner or they can have a body centered or they can have a face centered so when you do that you end up with 14 Bravais lattices okay so there can be seven crystal classes and there are 14 Bravais lattices okay for example if you take cubic it's symmetric in all respects complete a is equal to b equal to c that means all the three sides are equal the three angles alpha beta gamma is equal to 90 degrees so this particular um, okay class has all types of symmetries okay because all the lengths are equal all the angles are equal and they are equal to 90 now in this cubic you can have a primitive structure you can have this uh, body centered cubic as well as you can have a face centered cubic okay cubic has that similarly if you take tetragonal you can have a uh, here in tetragonal a equal to b like this but uh, c is not same as a and b so uh, instead of being a cubic uh, it can be like this you know extended form and alpha beta gamma are equal to 90 degrees okay uh, so here you can have a uh, uh, yeah, basic form or primitive form and you can have a body uh, centered cubic so there are two types two Bravais lattices for the tetragonal class. If you take orthorhombic, A is not equal to B, not equal to C, but angles are equal to 90 degrees, okay, look at this. So you can have a primitive form, you can have a body centered form, we can have a face centered form, okay, we can also have a side centered, that means uh, the eight corners are filled and only these two sides are filled, unlike the face centered where all the six sides you have atoms. So this particular ortho orthorhombic crystal class has got four Bravais lattices. So that is why totally we have 14 Bravais lattices and uh, we have uh, seven crystal classes. Okay. So look at triclinic, this is the most uh, um, unsymmetric system, A not equal to B not equal to C, alpha not equal to beta not equal to gamma not equal to 90 degrees. Okay. So, there is only one form that is called the primitive form. So, all the metals will have crystals uh, which will fall in one of this, one of these crystal classes and one of these Bravais lattices. So, that is the beauty of metals, we can group them together and uh, if you are preparing uh, uh, metal alloys, if that means if you are adding another metal to another one metal um, based on the dimensions. Um, it may go and replace one of these at atoms or they may destroy their crystal structure. So, we can sort of uh, a priori design what type of uh, impurity or second metal that can be added to the first metal to maintain property or modify property and so on actually. So, um, study of these crystal structure and crystal classification is very, very important in designing uh, novel metal alloys. Okay. So, we will continue more um, on these crystal uh, structures in the next class as well. Thank you very much for your time.